Please stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known and from whom no secrets are hid, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amidst all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the 
first reading for today is Acts 16, 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divin divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of that very hour. But when her owner saw that they hoped, her hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men were disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt and observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be, be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailers to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do now to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were here in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. And by special request, we have some special music.
Psalm for today is Psalm 97. Can we please read responsively? The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, and let the multitude of the isles be glad. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. Confounded by all who worship, carved images and delight, and false gods, bow down before the Lord, all you gods. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far beyond, above all gods. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Second reading is Revelations 22, 12 through 14, 16 through 17, and 20 through 21. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I. Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and a descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone here say, come. Let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. gospel comes to us from St. John, the 17th chapter. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, 
so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as I have loved, as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. <clears throat> oh, my Jesus, Savior of the world, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of our stories, who gave your life for those who would believe how it hurts my heart to read this prayer you prayed for your disciples and all who would follow that we would be one we heard earlier in the easter season that the world will will know we are your, your disciples by our love for one another great prayer great expectations for your believers yep we're right on it not I was at the constituting convention for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in Columbus, Ohio in 1988 as a brand new pastor. So exciting. Finally, three different Lutheran identities joining together to be one, listening to Jesus to be one and doing our best. And how many years before suddenly there were two or was it three different Lutheran branches broke away because we were not studying the Bible right or doing things right. And of course, there were at least two other Lutheran denominations who never joined in the Constituting Convention in the first place. My Methodist pastor friend in Biloxi, Mississippi is heartbroken because the United Methodist Church will no longer be united. Another Methodist brand is about to start this summer. A church in another state is so sure it's right in its complaint against the ELCA that they, the pastor and council would not let the bishop in the door. The church I served in Indiana many years ago had a meeting at that church uh, in the 30s sometime. They were a non-denominational church and they were deciding whether to become Lutheran or United Church of Christ. That meeting ended with the people throwing hymnals at one another. <laughs> Some churches will not accept women as their pastor their loss, am I right? <laughs> will not accept a black pastor. Never would they consider an energetic, hardworking, fully ordained, loving pastor who is gay. Did Jesus really mean that we should be one? and love one another. Oh, dear Jesus, the world is too much with us. We can hardly hear this prayer you prayed so fervently right out loud there for all the world you hear because of our arguing and posturing that's going on in all the world around us on TV and social media the sound of gunshots in grocery stores, in city streets, in schools, even in churches and synagogues. 
People who claim to be Orthodox Christians are bombing each other, other Orthodox Christians in Ukraine. We demonize people of color without ever meeting one. Mistrust has grown up since the days of Martin Luther between Lutherans and Catholics over different worship practices by Pentecostals and Quakers, over differences and have grown up over the Lord's Supper, over baptism, who is worthy and who is not, cannot, receive the gifts the Lord left for us. The gifts you gave us, Jesus, you called us to come and be healed. Always, we fight over who is in and who is out. We will decide who Jesus loves. No, Jesus has said and prayed, no, you disciples have to turn away from this world, break through these lies. And so this becomes our constant struggle, our tongue of war, tug of war, if you will, as long as we live to love one another. We cannot be like everyone else. How will people ever learn of Jesus be eager to love Jesus is if all that they see and hear is us arguing and quarreling and quibbling and being mean and divisive and show lack of forgiveness and refusal to learn what Jesus said. We have too much like dividing into classes and races, rejecting some, scorning and demeaning others. And yet, and yet, three weeks ago, I was part of a team on a weekend retreat, a special program to try to bless women who have been in jail or who have husbands or sons in jail. We team members don't ask them what happened. We don't judge their lives or accuse them of failing their children or husbands somehow. We don't ask them, do you believe in Jesus? We simply love them that weekend, give them small gifts, serve them wonderful meals, and spend lots of time listening and crying and singing. I watched this team, some of whom have been incarcerated themselves. Some still have their loved ones in jail. Talk of how Jesus has loved them, healed them, carry their pain and worry how they hugged and consoled these guests, hoping they would hear Jesus and see Jesus in them and lay down their burdens and know how he loved them. Yes, even them. Women of all colors, of all ages, black and white, poor and middle class, remembering the power of Jesus Christ to give us new life, telling how they can hang on to Jesus in the middle of the chaos and learn to serve and how we can live together as one. Last week, I was serving a church in Mobile, Alabama, that has many black members as about as many white members. The assisting minister that day is black and I could see the pain on her face after the shootings in San Antonio, that was before the shootings in Texas. And I heard her lead the most powerful prayer of the people to please Jesus, please, bring an end to racial violence and hatred. It is all too much. And she and I hugged each other during the passing of the peace, asking, will this ever end? We hugged each other 
at both these weekends because no, we don't know when the hatred and the evil will end, but we will hold on to each other. We will keep singing and telling each other once again that Jesus is Lord. And we will work together to make this prayer to be one girl alive. We are deeply loved, if deeply flawed. And Jesus still looks at us still as capable and willing and needed to bring salvation and hope to at least some of the world and maybe whole nations. We have been baptized to be able to rise each morning as new people, ready and willing to follow our Lord out to all people. Easter has come. And although bullies and thugs and murderers seem to be winning, peace and justice will come in God's good time. This is God's will and why he sent his son to all the world. We are commanded to be fools for Christ, doing all sorts of wonderful things in hard, terrible times to tell there is unbelievable love available for you. Great healing and light and hope while war rages and bullets fly. Some people go far away to be of help where there is sickness and hunger and people have not heard of the Lord. Some make quilts for people they don't even know. And they send soap and toothbrushes and towels off somewhere or other. We send money to buy chickens and goats to families in countries we can't even pronounce. And we send money to organizations that fight for peace and build hospitals and run hospitals that treat wounded people caught in war. Last week, a white billionaire, a white billionaire, felt the Holy Spirit passing by and gave a whole school of black students their tuition paid in college for the next four years. And amidst the cheering and the hollering, he added, and any parent who wants to go to school, we will pay the tuition. He didn't know those people. They didn't know him. Catholics and, worship, and Catholics and Lutherans worshiped together a few years ago in a Lutheran cathedral. I think it was in Sweden. And the Pope apologized for their part in the hatred that's gone on and that he do, does think that Martin Luther's thinking about the justification by grace through faith is right. Lutherans have apologized to Jewish people for centuries of hatred and denigration that contributed to the rise of Nazi evil. We read the, we have read the Apostle Paul's letter again that they too are God's people. We keep trying to do better. Christians of all sorts are now apologizing to the First Nation Native people for years, centuries of forcing them off their land and removing their children from their families to convert them to European ways and Christianity forcing them. We are trying to listen to Jesus and be one. And here we are in this place because we love each other. We care about each other. We're working on listening and hearing. We sing together even though we are not all the same because we live in hope. 
we will sing praise to our God, even through our personal sorrows and worries. We will continue to hope because Jesus is Lord. We will keep praying through the darkness because we do believe that Jesus lives and reigns. The Holy Spirit comes to teach us and pray for us all the time. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is savior of the whole world. Jesus will come again to fix all of this. And we will rejoice and sing. And that's our story. And we're sticking to it. Amen. <laughs>
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Jesus on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come and speak the Spirit again. I speak the Holy Spirit in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. And also with you, safety, cheers, and smiling faces.
set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to God, the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need and all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, make your people one as you and your son are one. Send up to us the gifts we have been given by your spirit. Send us to all people, especially those experiencing division or hatred or who are questioning your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Keep in our minds and make us grateful for our nation, for those who gave all for our honor and our freedom. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to conflicts that arise among us, among nations, and among the world. Lord, in your mercy. We plead, O oh Lord, for peace in Ukraine and wherever people have to flee their homes. Help us to welcome the refugees, to provide for them, to make this everywhere a better place. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, by depression, by violence in their homes, by constant worry, especially Irene, Lee, Marion, Al, Shirley, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Kim, Pat, Marcia, Heidi, Greg, Pastor Lisa, Bonnie, Bill, Arlene, Bob, Mason, Dawson, Kim, Mike, Dylan, Francis, Sean, Karen, and the Bain family. Heal them as it is your will. Lord, in your mercy. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Bless us with trust in your love and with eager longing for Christ to come again to fix us and fix the world, even as we sense his presence with us now. Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those all around us. So be swift to be kind, eager to show mercy, and to give love to one another as you have been loved. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Oh, 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 oh,